These are Lego blocks. One of the cleverest toys ever invented. It's completely modular and it literally is one of my favorite toys as a kid. And now Sonoff has literally reinvented smart switches in Lego form. Let me explain. Their new Fusion series is literally smart switch Lego. So let's take a look at it. Here my friends is our Sonoff Lego blocks. So it's pretty neat, right? You've got these uh, face plates and um, you can just clip in the switches you want. So you can have a blind controller or um, a light switch. But it's a bit more than that, really. These aren't ordinary smart switches. They're completely modular. Now, I really like this new Fusion series from Sonoff. It has this sort of minimalist, um, sort of slick design with this sort of big orby uh, push button in the front. Um, it's plain, but rather elegant. I like it. Um, but what I really like is the fact that it's really um, compact as well. Um, there's very little clearance needed in your back box to fit this. It's very, very compact. Um, now, what's also smart about it is you might recognize this little um, module here looks very similar. It looks very similar to uh, the Matter R4M that you would use to make your existing light switch smart. Reason for that is, is because it's exactly the same thing. This isn't actually a new smart switch. It is actually just a little caddy that takes the modules. This is a normal Mini R4M. All it is, is a little caddy with a push button switch in the front that has two little contacts there that makes connection with S1 and S2. Now, this is extremely modular, which means that now that if the smart switch module, electronic module fails, you don't have to replace the entire smart switch. You just uh, swap out the electronic module with a new one. And if you don't like the matter version, you simply take it out and you can swap it over for the normal Mini R4M. The normal Mini R4. Modular. Smart switch Lego. Love it. Now I love how truly flexible Sonoff has made this system. The fact that you can chop and change the modules as you please. Um, you can fit different types of switches into you can fit different types of switches into one faceplate. Um, and you can have a one, two or three gang version. It is very, very flexible. And also the good thing is they gave us a, a no neutral option as well. So if you don't have that neutral wire behind the light switch box, this um, sort of Zigbee version is quite handy because you could just have live in and switch live out. And um, you have a working lighting circuit that doesn't require a neutral behind the light switch. Now that's great if you go down the Zigbee route and you have some sort of a Zigbee bridge. Actually, that reminds me. Sonoff sent me these brand new uh, Zigbee products. Actually, they're um, Zigbee and Thread dongles that um, are fully compatible with Home Assistant and um, you can flash them with custom firmware. And um, they're specifically made to work with Home Assistant. So uh, if you want to go down the Zigbee route or down the Thread route, these are probably going to be perfect for that. This one um, can do power over Ethernet. So you don't have to necessarily power it with a, a USB power supply. And this one just plugs into a USB port. So this is a, a more advanced version. Unfortunately, I don't have any Home Assistant kit at the moment to test it with. But if you, if you want to go down the Matter route, they do have a Matter option available. And I think, obviously, Matter is the future. You know, the fact that you can have it uh, be controlled locally without going through the cloud. That's a massive bonus. 
and its compatibility with so many different things with home assistant with um, google home apple um, samsung smart things and countless others it just kind of it's going to work with everything matter it's really really good um, the only thing i would say is there seems to be no neutral free version for matter yet which is a little bit disappointing i i really would like to see um, a no neutral smart switch that's matter compatible now this does work obviously but you require that neutral connection beyond your light switch which on older houses just isn't always available and it means you have to put a, pull the neutral wire down um, to your light switch box now i know many of you don't have this pesky neutral wire behind your light switch box and um, would still like to use the matter option um, and unfortunately pulling a neutral down isn't always an easy thing to do so maybe some of you haven't seen my no neutral circuit in my previous videos yet so i thought i'd demonstrate it in this video again and i'm sure it should work since um, i've demonstrated before with the mini r4m so let's try and wire this up in no neutral mode using my experimental no neutral circuit. So this is the latest version of my um, no neutral circuit. This is the virtual neutral adapter that generates um, sort of a neutral for the smart switch to work behind the light switch box. And then of course you need the uh, bypass adapter that goes by the um, light fitting itself for the light bulb. So this sends the neutral down through the switch line. So we'll wire these up and I'll demonstrate it and then I'll explain how it all works. Um, some of you would never have seen this before so um, it'd be nice to explain exactly how it works and also this version is slightly different as well. This kind of supersedes some, some of my older circuits. And there you go, it's all wired up and powered up. And as you can see there's only a live connection going here um, so there's no neutral as such going to the um, smart switch but it still works and uh, the neutral connection is really up here by the light bulb itself by the bypass circuit up here so the neutrals over here and the live is over here and the switch live now passes both live and neutral sort of in half wave cycles so one half of the half wave uh, does this switched output to the light and the other bottom half of the half wave does the neutral supply for our smart switch over here and i think i'll go into a bit of a sort of refresher on how this actually works if you wanted to make these yourself i might actually do a very basic version just with the diodes uh, because some types of uh, light bulbs will actually work on half wave without flickering so um, this can also work on half wave um, because it has a half wave rectifier inside so we can just power this with half wave as well so this is actually quite a cool demonstration where we can show this working just with diodes and it will simplify the explanation so here's the diode only simplified version and it shows you the direction of the diodes so let's try it out in practice so here we have um, our circuit basically duplicating what I did in the um, circuit diagram and as you can see it's just a, a couple of diodes steering the half wave signals of the sine wave and it works perfectly um, you've got your neutral feed on this side soldered to the bulb directly and obviously a couple of diodes soldered to the bulb and then you have your live supply going to the smart switch and um, this is your switch line here now doing both um, positive and negative half cycles uh, respectively for one to power the smart switch and the other one to power the light bulb. Um, now we're, we're quite lucky that it actually works just with diodes because um, this has a half wave rectifier inside and this must have quite a large smoothing capacitor inside because there's, um, there's no flicker on this bulb whatsoever. And if we look at uh, the front and we press the button, it works perfectly without a neutral at the smart switch. Now, normally you can't get away just with using diodes like this. Um, you need some sort of capacitor to, to smooth out the ripples on this side. And even though this uh, doesn't strictly need a capacitor for this smart switch, 
Um, normally I would add a capacitor there to smooth the ripples out as well because this circuit can work on other smart switches as well and some of them might have a full bridge uh, rectifier inside and um, that could do with a smooth uh, ripple free DC going to it. So yes, even though it does work just with diodes, you can't just rely on this very simple circuit. We're also using these tiny little one amp diodes and I think in practice you need to use something more substantial. Um, one amp is fine for LED bulbs but what you want to use is something like these 10 amp diodes because they can withstand a short circuit probably and the circuit breaker tripping. Um, so it's much more robust using big heavy diodes like this. But for our demonstration these one amp diodes work perfectly. Now it's absolutely crucial that you wire these diodes in the polarity shown in the diagram. If just one of them is in the wrong position um, you'll have a dead short and it's not going to end well. So it's definitely a good idea to add some sort of inline fuse. Not so much of a problem in the UK because the lighting circuit is protected by a 6 amp circuit breaker. But in the US the situation is different. Um, in North America they can have 15 or 20 amp circuit breakers to protect the lighting circuit. And these smart switches are only really rated for 10 amps. Now 10 amps is plenty for modern day LED lighting because they only draw in the order of milliamps. So it's really only for short circuit protection and in that case I think it will still trip a 20 amp circuit breaker. It's just that the relay might not survive it. So the diodes on their own is just not good enough. We need to add some capacitors so that it gets rid of the ripple on the LED light bulb so we don't get any flickering there. And we want to get a nice smooth power supply for our smart switch as well. So we add a capacitor there as well. Now we also need to add some form of inrush limiting because when these capacitors first charge up they produce a massive current spike which can potentially damage the relay contacts or at least shorten its lifespan. And so it's a good idea to add these resistors. So the resistors help just to take the edge off of that instant current spike. It just soften it slightly. Now both circuit modules look almost identical but there is a slight difference in how they're connected. On the smart switch side, the resistor capacitor pair isn't connected to both diodes. On the resistor side, it's connected to the live in. This is because it's moving out the supply to the smart switch. This is different to how the LED light bulb, the capacitor resistor pair, connects to both diodes. So, this is more or less what a more realistic circuit would look like. We have two high power diodes, 10 amp diodes, a 2 watt resistor, something like um, 5 to 10 ohms, and a 15 microfarad capacitor rated at about 450 volts, 400 volts around there. And this is what would go here more or less. Now this is still quite chunky um, compared to my modules. I have used a few little tricks to miniaturize this to make it really compact. I've managed to shrink it down to this sort of size, which is much, much smaller. Um, and the way, the way I did that is by uh, using a few little tricks. And one of the tricks is uh, with the diodes. Instead of using those chunky 10 amp diodes, I've used a bridge rectifier in a sort of a clever way. And I'll explain. Now a bridge rectifier like this one has four diodes inside. But if you bridge out the two AC terminals, you effectively get two diodes in series. You convert the four diodes into two diodes in series, which means you get four diodes with a current in the form of two diodes, so it can handle more current, theoretically. And um, you can get some of these bridge rectifiers in really small form factors. This is a four amp bridge rectifier, and it's very, very small. And what we can do is we can... Uh, bridge out, we can bridge out the AC terminals like that. So now we get two diodes in series and because it's four diodes doubled up, um, it can handle more current. So in theory, we get a high current series connected diode package. And that makes for a very compact module like this one. 
So that's how I managed to make them so small. Now I've also managed to find these very, very small inline fuses that you can solder directly into the module itself. Um, now I tried various different types of fuses, like these PCB fuses. They're, they were all quite good, but they're a bit too big, whereas these are really, really small. So in my latest module designs, I incorporate these fuses for protection inside, just in case um, something is incorrectly connected then this fuse can blow. I've been thinking about putting it in line with the live so that you can cut it out and replace it yourself in the future. But for the time being, I'm just incorporating it inside of the heat shrink directly. So it's all hidden inside the module. So you'd have to cut open the module to replace this fuse. But the fuse is really just a last resort to protect everything. Nobody wants a fire. Now, unfortunately, I don't have much spare time to manufacture any of these uh, no-neutral modules. Um, but if I do change my mind in the future, or if I get time, I might put a link in the description where you can get hold of them if you don't feel like making them yourself. That's about enough for my experimental circuits for now. I think uh, Sonoff did something quite remarkable with this Fusion series. I really like this mix-and-match LEGO approach. I think it's got loads of potential. So if you like this product and you would like to try it for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description and you can use my coupon code to get a really nice little discount as well. It'll help the channel out. Sonoff didn't pay me anything to make this video, but they do send me these cool gadgets to test out. So I do appreciate that. It's also a lot of fun to test out some of their pre-release stuff they send me that nobody else has seen yet. And I'm like one of the first people to test it out. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching my project box. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one.